Well, it's another night, and I thought I'd show you on this uh, GPS how to select a hazmat route because I've had some questions ask me about it. I mean, I'm, I've had some people ask me questions about it, and uh, I don't know how well it's going to show up on this GoPro, but let's just try it, okay? So if when you turn on the GPS, it automatically brings this screen up right up here to the on top of this to the right here. It'll have be a little plus. You go down through here and select what you have. I currently have corrosive liquids, eight. Save. And now you got corrosive eight. Hit select. And now anything, anywhere you go will be a hazmat route. For example, voice command. Saved places. Dallas. Navigate. So what's it showing me here? It's going to calculate in a second, and this will be your hazmat route. It doesn't say anything different, you know, because you know you're going US 69 to 75, and then the difference is going to be once you get down past all that. And you can go down through here and check where you're going. Dallas North Tollway, George Bush Turnpike, 35 East South, uh, 433 Mockingbird. Okay, I don't have to give you all that information, but... You can go on through there and check it if you want, but there you go, 624 miles for the night. And by the way, this set was already hooked for me when I got here. Some of these damn handles are really tough to crank, especially on a GI trailer, very tough. A lot of them, they're just old trailers. Uh, but I guess we're buying more trailers, hopefully to replace them. Everything back here seems to be kosher. Got lights, no air leaks. I did need to check under here because I'm not the one who hooked this set up. So I'm not sure exactly how it, if it's ready to go or not. But it is. It's ready. Got the corrosive 8 placard out. So this particular trailer has... 3,800 pounds of corrosive material. So there you go. This trailer just has general freight on this one. I didn't, you know, you don't have to go through that many trailer drops and hooks in, in one location at the start of your day every time you go out. That's, that's just what happened to me yesterday. That doesn't happen all the time. The other thing that doesn't happen all the time is the constant truck swapping. At my terminal, you guys already know I'm assigned one truck, but my truck is in the shop, therefore I had to take a loaner truck, which I did, but it had a def issue. You guys probably remember there was a, a def light on in the truck and on the dash. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but anyway, it had a def issue, it needed to be serviced. And the, uh, the windshield wiper on the driver's side stopped working while it was raining and it was in use. It just quit working. So I was, on, I was pretty close to the Springfield terminal. So I went ahead and, and drove up to the Springfield terminal, swapped out trucks, and I got this baby right here. So you're not constantly changing trucks all the time. That's just something that at least I'm not always changing trucks. It's just something that's been going on recently because my truck's in the shop and all the loaner trucks I've been using are kind of, well, they're not up to par. They're not exactly road ready like they should be. So that's why I did that yesterday. So now you guys know. Initially, I got hired on. I, I could have taken one of two spots. They had a P&D position open. They had a extra board position open, so I chose extra board, which is what this is. Now they call it regional OTR. Well, I just run over the road five days a week, come home for two. And a lot of you guys are asking me how much time to do off do I actually get? And I'm gonna tell you that's gonna vary, but I would say on average, it's about 60 hours a week where you're off work from the time you step out of the truck and get in your personal vehicle until the time you get back in the company truck I would say it's about 60 hours on average and I've talked to guys who run out here they stay out for two weeks 
and then they'll go home just long enough to take a 34 hour reset and they come back to work and some guys work six days and then take a 34 so it's great that you can still volunteer to do that I mean the six days to take a 34 that would probably be ideal but I'm gonna tell you guys taking that 34 hour reset every week it's gonna be kind of tough on you you're gonna get burned out you're gonna get sick of driving you're gonna because I don't know what it is but you you can do that for a while and at some point you're like man I'm burned out because this company isn't like a lot of other trucking jobs where you drive for a couple hours and then you sit around and you wait and then you drive a few more hours and then you sit around and wait this job isn't like that you're constantly driving dropping hooking driving dropping hooking repeat 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 that's literally what you're gonna be doing all the time so a 34 hour reset is gonna get old really quick you're gonna wish you had two or three days off that's why it, ultimately it's better to just work five days take two days off you never know what kind of bid runs you're gonna get until you get to the terminal you're gonna work for and start asking around about those bid runs and then you get to see what all they have and how many drivers are there and that sort of thing I'm just gonna tell you that when you get to big cabin if you have the opportunity to park for a 30 minute break or whatever go to the woodshed I know there's a loves over there somewhere I just got fuel there but there's never any parking over there and it's like 7 a.m. there's no parking over there still and I had to get fuel that's why I went over there but here we are at the woodshed I'm, I was able to find a spot to park not be in anyone's way didn't have to block a fuel island and plus they got subway whereas the loves over in big cabin has a carl's jr subway's obviously better right it's the better choice anyway and plus they have some uh hot hot plate items in in there that you can eat some breakfast sandwiches breakfast burritos things like that some handmade salads are in there too i mean they got all kinds of stuff plus they got a good little souvenir shop in there if you're just driving through maybe it's your first time here maybe it's your last time here go in there and get you something from oklahoma you know what i mean i just like this truck stop i every time i come through here and have to take a break i prefer to go to the uh, woodshed at the big cabin what about you guys y'all like the loves or the woodshed just curious well we're gonna have to slow down and hit them flashers yeah railroad tracks ain't nobody around here even though no one's around, you never know. You could be putting yourself in ri at risk of getting hit of a train, even though there's nothing coming. Or a cop could see you and write you a big fine. I'm going to just go ahead and stop about right here. Got my flashers going. Looking both ways. Everything's kosher. Oh, man. I let, that, I let off that clutch a little too much there. I'm gonna keep my flashes on because I'm going slow. We're not gonna shift over the tracks. Believe it or not, some people don't understand that you just can't shift over railroad tracks. <laughs> that drive line falls out of your truck or something, you know, you're you kind of stuck there. And then they gotta delay the train from coming through or switch it around or whatever they're gonna do. I had a buddy of mine that did that one time. He sat there for a long time. I'm just gonna tell you he was there for a few hours until they could come tow his truck out of the way And I think they was trying to write him up write him up for it give him a fine or something uh, The local law enforcement there, but I don't remember how that played out. That's been a few years ago. So anyway, my reasons for the uh, Going extra board rather than P&D is so that I could get a line haul run even sooner Wow, it's nice out there here Get a line haul run even sooner Anyway, that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that it was gonna build line haul seniority on the extra board side. And it was something I was already used to doing, driving the truck from point A to point B, this, that, and the other. So I was already used to doing it. I gotta get over in the left lane. There you go. So the only thing that really changed was uh, the money. 
money was a lot better than what I was currently doing at the time and um, you know the sleeping arrangement sleeping out of the hotel that was new to me at the time I mean I'm used to it now but uh, that's why I chose extra board now like I said before guys y'all go to a big terminal within the first year you might you might get a bid run you just, you just might because there's so many drivers and so many bid runs out of those terminals you might get one smaller terminal there's a slim chance but you, there's still a chance but there's a slim chance that you're gonna get a bid run within the first couple of years so that's something you, you guys might want to think about you know maybe go combo I don't know so anyway that's I feel like I keep explaining this to you guys I don't know why I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry I'm kind of rehashing a lot of the same old stuff that I've already talked about this is supposed to be just freestyling right here and all I'm doing is talking about work but anyway so we're coming on down through here. I can't believe they still got road construction down through here, man. I, it seems like they got road construction down through here. Every time I come down through here, just in a different part of the highway. Which I'm glad they're fixing it up. I mean, I, I praise them for that. I hope they do all of it like this. All the way back to Big Cabin. They could just fix the whole damn thing. I'd be happy with that. Anyway, I got 235 miles left to go. And ain't nothing out here but farmland, farmers, and cows, apparently. I like Oklahoma, but boy, I hate to live here during the wintertime. The windy, icy weather that they get sometimes. Uh, it's a little too much for me. Which I can't believe Arkansas got as much snow as they got this year because it doesn't normally do something like that in the Mid-South. That's a new or that's new for us. But Essex was on top of it, man. They were like, nope, nothing's coming in, nothing's going out, nothing's coming through. Just block every you know, our drivers block all of our stuff out. So that worked out pretty good, I guess. And then I think we played catch up there for a little while, and then I think everything's kinda back to normal, at least from what I've seen. Maybe some other drivers out there can chime in on that. Got the news today i have a bid run it starts on the 21st took my terminal manager a while to get around to me but i sent him a text today and he just sent it to me i don't know 20 an hour ago something like that so thought i'd add that to in the video i've had a few guys ask me about it and now you know everybody knows i'm going to start a bid run not this coming week but next week and of course i'll kind of show you guys the ins and outs of how that goes uh if I can so yeah I'll talk about that more as uh, as I get more and more into it and it should be a pretty good bid run 2,960 miles a week between 20 and 30 dropping hooks the reason it's so many dropping hooks is because it's a double turn so what I'm going to end up doing leaving my terminal going to one terminal that isn't too far away coming back and then repeating the process one more time and then going home for the day um so it's 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 a working man's run that's for sure if it's a true double now we've had this run in the past it ended up being cut i hear another guy was on it for 10 years and did a double every night so i don't know i don't know the ins and outs i don't know the history of the run all that much all i can tell you is that uh i'm supposed to get 2960 miles a week between 20 and 30 driving hooks each week and that's how it should be so yeah, it's a working man's run, or it's supposed to be, or it used to be, or whatever. So that's what's going on with me. I'm pretty excited about it because that means I get to be home on the weekends. I get to be home every day. Now, it is a night run. Uh, my terminal, that's what I was going to say. Smaller terminals don't always have the daytime bid runs. It's typically the larger terminals that have those daytime runs. Most of the small terminals, you know, have the nighttime runs. But I do get to come home every day, literally every day. And uh, I'll get home on the weekends, probably Saturday morning at some time. It'll be before, it'll probably be before 10 a.m. for sure. And, uh, you know, go home, sleep a few hours, get a power nap in, get up, hang out with the family. Um, you know, go to church Sunday, stay up all night Sunday night until early Monday morning and go to sleep, get up and get do it all over again. 
So that's what I'm getting ready to do for the next year, as long as the run stays. Because sometimes a run can get cut, which I think I talked about earlier. Uh, but sometimes a run can get cut. So that's what I'm going to be thinking about, hoping it doesn't get cut and hoping it does me really well. Financially speaking, we're talking between 23 and 2400 bucks a week if it goes the way that it should go. So we're talking about some good cash here for sure every week. So we're talking about a $120,000 a year run. Uh, let's just hope it, it pays out what it's supposed to. All right, so... All right, I got nothing else new for you. So, uh, I, oh yeah, one more thing. I know a lot of guys are talking about the video I did yesterday. I know it was dark. The terminals are dark, and I wanted to kind of portray that in the video, but I also need to get a light for the GoPro, which I didn't think I was ever going to need, but obviously I need one. <laughs> so I'll try to purchase one of those this week and hopefully get it in here before I start my bid run. So... When I am walking around the truck at night, you guys can actually see what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to order one of those this week and should have it by next week for sure. So thanks guys for the feedback on the last video. Give me some feedback on this one. Hopefully it's uh, good or better or different or tell me something. I don't have a light yet, so uh, I won't have one until I get back home. So maybe I'll do some different shots. How about the driving the, the, the night driving stuff is that doing okay i don't know how well that's coming through if it's too dark i don't know how to make that any brighter really i'm not a go pro pro if you know what i mean so uh anyway you guys you guys my email i know is no longer at the front and back of my videos but it is still in the description below it's one of the second or third things that you see down there so you guys want to hit me up in an email hit me up if not y'all have a good one talk to you later